everybody, how's it going? Stadman coming back at you once again, and hey, yeah, I took a week off there, didn't I, at the end of the year? Uh, well, there's a couple of reasons for that. I, I know that I wanted to do like five videos a week for every week of 2015, and because I took the week off last week, that means I didn't actually officially get it done but I got pretty close, so whatever. Uh, a bunch of stuff happened. It was just, it was the holidays. I got back uh, from visiting my brother and my uh, nieces and nephew on uh, Sunday, which is the day that I usually record, edit, and render my videos for YouTube. So, I didn't have time to do it on Sunday because I got back you know, four or five-ish, I guess. Maybe it was a little bit later, actually. I don't remember. But I got back late enough that it was just like after um, all the holiday hijinks and whatnot that we had, uh, all the fun that we had and all that, I, I just really, I was not in the mood. I was not interested in doing any videos at that particular moment in time. So I figured, ah, uh, if, if I don't do it today, then I'm not going to do it on any day of the weekdays because weekdays, typically, I have, uh, you know, I have, I have to write for a website, and then there's another job that I might be starting soon, well, it looks like I am going to be starting here very soon, uh, that I just recently got contacted about on, uh, LinkedIn so you know hopefully that pans out at least it'll mean a couple extra bucks I'm really really trying to get like a you know a steady job a steady paying job which as a writer is actually very hard to do it's very difficult to do it's one of those like people refer to it as a dream job for a reason you know they say anybody can write but uh, the problem is actually getting a well-paying job that is like, you know, steady, as in a nine-to-five kind of thing as a writer nowadays, is damn near impossible. Like, there's very few positions like that. Most of the positions out there are very uh, much like contract work and freelance work and all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, you can foreseeably make something like that work as a career but it just it's not very good it's not very what is this a tissue it's a tissue that that should tell you the other reason that should tell you the other reason that i have been uh slacking lately i don't know if you can tell from my voice my nasally sound of my voice but um yeah i've been sick all this week I got sick when I went to see my nieces and nephew it's not their fault I'm never exposed to anything so every time I get exposed to the kids it's just it's bound to happen you know it happens almost every time without ex and without uh, oh I don't even know my, my head is too filled with snot to come up with the word blah <laughs> But anyways, I thought I'd come at you at least now, this week, with this little video. But first I want to uh, express that and explain that I'm, uh, for, for the second time, mind you, second time that I said this, but I am not going to be doing this year what I did last year. I'm not going to be doing uh, five videos a week this year. I am going to be doing as many videos as I can each week. But not so much that I'm spending like 10 to 12 hours uh, a day on Sunday and sometimes on Saturday and all that in order to get it done. I'm going to do a video when I have a video to do. You know what I mean? Something that I actually... Uh, uh, towards the end of the year, it, for me, it really became more of a chore. And I don't want it to be a chore. I don't want YouTube to be a chore. I want it to be something that I do because I legitimately want to do it. So that's why I've decided to, you know, maybe pull back a bit on the amount of videos I'm doing. So, um, you know, instead of five, you might be seeing 
three, four videos in a week. Uh, I'll try to make sure that it doesn't go under two, but, you know, last week uh, that was basically just I didn't have any other time to record or edit any videos, and I was sick and this and that, and I was trying to, you know, get everything set up at this new uh, gig that I've got going for me. Um, you know, just a bunch of random things, just compi compiling all together to make it very difficult for me to do anything like that. So I just, I abstained. I was like, you know what, it's the end of the year. It's the holidays. They'll understand. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, as you may have noticed from behind me here, uh, I did get some interesting Christmas presents. My brother got me this uh, um, Kylo Ren cutout here. It's interesting, this Kylo Ren cutout really reminds me of the, uh, it reminds me of the Boba Fett cutout that he had back when he was a teenager. Uh, when, when he was a teenager, he had a Boba Fett cutout in his room. Uh, I remember it vividly, and it was much like this one here. So, I thought it was an interesting little thing for him to get me, and hey... A uh, pretty damn cool cutout to show some love for the new Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens. Of course, uh, if you've seen the movie, then you may or may not actually like Kylo Ren all that much. He's definitely the bad guy, and well, there are a lot of people criticizing him right now, criticizing the character. I won't get into that because I'm not going to get into spoiler territory with that movie. It's freaking Star Wars, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But I will be doing a review of Star Wars. If you want me to do a spoiler alert, I used to do the spoiler alert stuff back in the day a long time ago. Most of you probably don't know about it, but I used to do these uh, reviews that were filled with spoilers, and I called them spoiler alerts. So... If you want me to do one of those for Star Wars The Force Awakens, I might consider it. But um, for now, I'm just going to be doing a spoiler-free review of Star Wars. And I'll make sure I post up in the, in the thing that it's spoiler-free so everybody knows. And don't click on it by accident, you know. And when I say spoiler-free, I mean it. I mean, I can criticize a movie based on its merits without giving anything away because I studied that shit, man. I went to college. I learned how to properly criticize something. I took several classes on criticism, on film criticism, on literary criticism. I know what I'm doing when it comes to that. So, you don't have to worry about it. But this video, aside from me rambling, is all about what I got for Christmas. Uh, the big thing there, right there, was um, Kylo Ren cut out. Very cool. Very cool. In addition to that, though, I also got something that I've been trying to get a hold of for a while, but I haven't really been able to find it, or at least not in any way that I can make sure that it was in good quality, good condition, because a lot of the copies that you find now are used. So... When I got this for Christmas, I was just blown away. Because that means I can officially start to collect these. This is the first volume of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The Ultimate Collection Volume 1. And this is the original, the very first Ninja Turtles comics that were ever made. As in... The very first time that Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird put pen to paper and decided that they were going to do a Ninja Turtles comic book. That's what you get in here. The first seven issues, I believe. And they're all in glorious black and white and a hardcover, beautiful edition here. Uh, let's see if I can't find the splash page here that... I was admiring when I opened it the first day. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it is. Hold on. Hold on. I don't want to 
ruin this, so I gotta be careful. There we go. There we go. How's that? It's beautiful, isn't it? It's gorgeous. So, yeah. Uh, this includes, as we can see on the back here, there's actually information on the back. It includes Mirage Studios TMT issues number one through seven, Raphael Micro Series One Shot, annotations by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, and more. There are five volumes out, but they are not always very easy to find. So, when you do, sometimes they fetch pretty, you know, crazy prices. The list price on these is forty nine ninety nine each, and honestly, having seen it now, seeing how big they are and how beefy and how really nice quality, like hardcover uh, editions these are, I can understand now why they cost so much, and it's worth every goddamn dime, because, I mean, when you think about it, uh, the Ninja Turtles, uh, at least the original comics here, the way that they originally did them, they did not have them in like traditional comic book uh you know they didn't have the traditional size of comic book for these they chose more of a magazine size style of comic book for ninja turtles at least to start out with which means that it makes perfect sense why they would uh do a huge like bulky set like this because this is a proper recreation a proper reprinting of the original series so everything you get in here is about the size that you would expect to find in the original version of it so nothing is shrunken down nothing is you know puffed up or anything like that it is exactly as it should be so with that in mind damn is it worth it and I was very very happy received this for Christmas it was just I was blown away it was just a fantastic Christmas gift and I am very thankful for it I've got a few other things coming in the mail but uh, mostly like you know gift card kind of stuff in addition to that I needed a new phone and uh, I was going to get one anyways because I was uh, uh, I had reached the two-year contract thing with my old phone so I was going to just go get a new one but, well, uh, my family decided to switch carriers, and my brother found a way to get pretty cheap iPhones, so that's what I did. I got an iPhone 6. I'm not, I'm not a huge iPhone fan. I'll save that first and foremost. I don't, even now, I'm like, I don't really like this. It's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'll use it for things here and there, but, you know... I, there are just certain issues that I don't like about it, okay? For instance, uh, let me type in my passcode so that I can actually access the goddamn thing. Let's say you want to open... Well, they don't have uh, Reddit is Fun, which is my favorite Reddit app. That's only available on uh, the App Store, I guess. So, here's Rhombus. So, you open Rhombus, right? And that's fine and dandy. And at the bottom, they've got a bunch of things here. Uh, it's probably too bright for you to see. But at the bottom, they've got a bunch of things built into the actual app that allow you to, you know, look at messages, settings, all that stuff. But what do you do if you want to back out? Well, if, if you were on an Android device, there would be a back button right here. Right here. Doesn't exist. The only thing you get on the Apple, on the iPhone, is... I don't even know what happened there. Anyways, the only thing you get on the Apple iPhone here is this little button at the bottom here. So you have to press that, and then it takes you back to the main screen. However, although it serves this function as a back button, the problem is that it stays open in the background. How do you get it to not stay open in the background? How do you get it? How do you close the item? Well, it would be simple to do it in the uh, in the Android version, but here 
you have to I had to dig around to figure out how to do this you have to double click find it in the background here and then with the you have to make sure that you have the precise freaking finger on the right right on the button here you have to swipe it up that's to me that's just the the oddest choice it's the weirdest craziest choice instead of putting a freaking button on there like every other competitor is doing like run right here and run right here like instead of doing that to make it really easy for everybody to figure out this is how you close the program this is how you back out of a program um, they give you one button and then they work around the fact that they only have one button with their shitty fucking program with their shitty fucking uh, operating system which then forces every app maker out there, everyone who's making apps, to develop the app so that there will be extra buttons within the app on top of everything, a layover, over overlay, I'm sorry, not layover, but overlay of a button that allows you to go back or allows you to do this, allows you to do that, things that you would be able to do on an Android device with their extra buttons that you can't do on the Apple device because there's only one fucking button. That's a flawed fucking design. I'm sorry, that is a flawed design. When you are requesting that the people making the apps, making the programs that are going to be running on your goddamn system, you demand that they actually uh, work around your design flaws. Your Work around the fact that you only have one button. That is fucking stupid. I'm sorry, it's stupid. I do not like that. So, so far I'm not really a huge fan of this, but I'm not going to complain. It's an iPhone 6, I, whatever, you know, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. It's just, you know, not a huge fan right now. And, uh, to be perfectly honest, I still have my tablet, which is an Android device. And I'm probably going to end up using that for most of the stuff that I want to do, so... You know, it's mostly going to end up being uh, something that I use to send messages and make phone calls. Whoopty freaking do. It just, it kind of sucks because I would like to get more out of a cell phone nowadays, especially when it's like this advanced and everything, and it's one of the latest, newest phones, but I, I honestly, there's not much that I can get out of it. There's not much that I want out of this that I'm going to use it for, you know, so it, it's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying that I got this brand new, really high-end phone that I'm never going to, probably never going to use because everything I want to do, I can probably do better and easier on a fucking Android device. But, eh, it is what it is, and I'm still very thankful. I mean, I criticize it. But I am thankful to have a new phone because the old phone I have is getting really old, getting to the point where a lot of things it just couldn't do anymore. So uh, my tablet still is able to do a lot of stuff. No problem there. It's just the old phone that really needed to be replaced. And, well, there you go. Most of the stuff that I wanted to do on Android on my old Android phone, I can do on my tablet now. And if I don't want to do it on my tablet, there are some things that I can do on my iPhone. One thing that's really bothering me is that I'm going to have to look up how to fucking get a fucking ringtone on my iPhone. Because of the freaking iTunes. Must use iTunes. No, iTunes, iTunes, iTunes. I fucking hate iTunes. I've never used iTunes. I don't want to use iTunes. How about you accommodate the user, jackasses? But I guess that's not in their, uh, that's not what they're into now. Anyways, um, one last note, one last thing of note, I should say, that I picked up right before the holidays for myself as like a last little Christmas gift to myself was Seinfeld, the complete series. I saw my friend Sean get this uh, for a pretty penny. I think he got it for like, I don't even know. I can't remember how much he got it for. But he got it for a pretty cheap price. And then, not but a week or two later, it went on sale on Amazon 
for forty four ninety nine or something like that. And at that price, I was just like, are you kidding me? That's the lowest I've ever seen this box set go for. And there's good reason for that. It's got nine seasons of content on it, for crying out loud. Nine seasons of one of the best shows out there, undeniably, mind you. So, and this is one that, like, while it's syndicated still, it's not really in syndication as much as it used to be. So even though it is syndicated, you don't always get to see it. So, you know, I... I I go months without seeing an episode of this, and sometimes I'm thinking, man, I could go to watch. I could go for watching some Seinfeld right now, but you know, they don't have Seinfeld. I, I think they might have it on Hulu now, but they don't have it on Netflix. They don't have it on Amazon. They're, it's very hard to actually watch it when you want to watch it, however you want to watch it, unless you have the DVD set. So, pick that up for forty four ninety nine. Pretty damn good price. Um, it does, of course, come in this nice hard box, but the uh, thing that most people probably won't like is that it comes in the cardboard sleeves. And I've already noticed a few uh, discs scratching here, so that's a uh, bit problematic. But uh, so far, no problems in terms of playing the discs, and I've actually had a lot of fun uh, watch getting reacquainted with the series. I don't know why, like, uh, this series of all, I was just, like, immediately drawn to and immediately wanted to start watching again, but, uh, I'm already on season two, disc two, so I've watched two discs so far, and, uh, hey, that means I've only got, let's see, oh no, oh no, I've only got this much content left to watch, guys. I'm almost out of content to watch. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good deal, but I will note, and this is probably something that happens on a lot of the Seinfeld sets, but eh, the corner here got bent up. What are you going to do? Anyways, that will do it for my little overview of what I got for Christmas. There are a few extra things like I mentioned that I'm getting in the mail in the next few weeks, but I really, you know, I don't have a, I can't, I have anything to show for it, you know? <laughs> so that'll have to wait, but I'm sure that when that comes in the mail, it, uh, you know, you'll all be glad to see what I got, or at least some of you will, because uh, I got something that is going to be very helpful and useful for my video making here on YouTube and you know, for other projects that I want to do as well. So, yeah, it wasn't just like a, ooh, gift for me, gift for me. It was also uh, something that I could actually use to make the show better, to make the, the YouTube channel better, and to, you know, do more things like uh, things that I want to do. So, yeah. Awesome! In addition to like, you know, Kylo Ren and, and the iPhone and the Ninja Turtles, I'm also getting something that can help me out. So that's freaking cool. I made out, man. I mean, I didn't get many movie related things. Heck, I didn't get anything that was a movie. But I got that and that's from a movie. <laughs> so, yeah. Ah, that'll do it for now, but I guess tomorrow, or the day after, or whenever I decide, you can look forward to my review of Star Wars The Force Awakens! Catch you then. Peace.